Hey everybody, this is a bonus episode of uh, Let's Play Elite Dangerous. Uh, so I'm not going to give it an episode number really. Uh, I am currently in the Galileo station in the Sol system. That's right. I've returned back to Earth. Galileo is in orbit around the moon. Um, and I came back here to the seat of the Federation, the uh, home of all humankind expanding in the galaxy in 3300 to sort of do a... Um, a little bit of astronomy with you actually so as you take a look around you can see that the uh, stations in the earth system are gorgeous and palatial like they have plants inside the color schemes are very very bright uh, these are obviously extremely wealthy uh, places uh, capital uh, like it's a capital um, capital system in fact there's a capital ship nearby we might check that out if we have time but I'm not sure if we will uh, right away we're going to go do some um, astronomical observations for those of us or you that are into that kind of thing <clears throat> the first thing I need to do is get out and away from the station and into Super Cruise um, facing the Milky Way right now in fact here's the bright center I do believe oh there's there's Earth right there there's our pearl of a blue pant planet not much bigger than the end of my thumb. Drive charging. About the size of my thumb held arm's length. Four, three, two, one, engage. Okay, we're actually going to start heading out and away from the um, from the ecliptic, just to get a sense of um, get ourselves some speed and some distance, so we can actually see more stars in the night sky as you. Notice we get away from, um, we notice you get away from the sun and stuff like that. More stars start becoming a little bit visible. So we're just going to kick ourselves up into Super Cruise. And um, I'll wait until I get more speed and a little bit more distance and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. All right, we've crossed light speed and uh, this is a good time to take a look at our first observation. And the reason I'm doing this special feature is I wanted to kind of clue you guys in on the uh, the accuracy of the modeling that Elite Dangerous has of the Milky Way galaxy. They've basically taken all the information that we currently have and put it into the game. And then for the rest of the 400 or 399.99 billion stars, they did a procedural generation um, to kind of fill in the gaps. But we're going to take a look at some information here. We're going to start off with the single most recognizable constellation in the northern hemisphere and you astronomy buffs out there will probably already recognize this star name so if I flip myself around here and take a look at this star We see that Dubhi is the end of the uh, the saucepan that we often refer to as the Big Dipper. But uh, the Big Dipper is actually part of a much larger constellation. Let's see if I can't get most of that in my viewpoint here. Um, and this constellation is actually Ursa Major, or uh, otherwise the Bear. And um, when we look back at the galactic map, we see that W is actually 122.97 light years away. So that star right there is 122.97 light years away and makes up one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky. And uh, if we go to the galactic map once again, we can kind of see its 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 um, its uh, orientation with regard to Sol, which is where we are right now, our home system. Now. If I actually go a step further and look at one of our nearest neighbors, actually one of one of Earth's uh, or the Sun's nearest neighbors, so I can't find it on my list here. Here it is, Wise 1506-7027. We'll lock that in our destination. And remember, if you follow this lip of the Big Dipper straight up, you basically bump into Polaris. That's that bright star right there which makes up um, one of the stars of Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper. And here we are just just to the bottom of the Little Dipper. If I flip it around here, we can get a better view. So uh, <clears throat> here's the Little Dipper directly um, sort of up near the top of our windscreen here, or, or uh, the windshield is, the, is Polaris. 
and we can see Y is 1506 plus 7027, 10.5 light years away, uh, right where it should be in our astronomical survey, and that's one of one of our closest neighbors that you can get to relatively easy. Uh, all you Star Trek fans out there, you should be familiar with Wolf 359, and uh, the Outer Limits fans should probably recognize it as well. So, uh, Wolf 359 is only 7.78 light years away, and let's, uh, we'll take a look at the galaxy map to see, you know, just to get a sense. Here's Saul. Here's Wolf 359. It's right there. Not very far at all. Uh, an easy jump for most people. It's this little red dot right there. But if I uh, orient it myself a little bit, you can see the constellation it's to the, to the bottom of, and we are currently looking at Leo. So these bright stars make up the shape of Leo, uh, and all these constellations are recognizable pretty easily uh, by everyone in the Northern Hemisphere. The Big Dipper, for example, is visible all year around as long as you can see the night sky. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna head a little bit closer to the ecliptic plane and take a look at a really cool place that I can't target directly from here, and it's hard to spell. Play, uh... <laughs> It's the Pleiades, which I have apparently spelled wrong. Let's try that again. I have the E and the A backwards. There we go. So the Pleiades is a cluster of stars that is 383 light years away. We're going to go ahead and select Maya, one of the stars in the Pleiades cluster, and we'll go ahead and angle over here and take a look. <clears throat> There's Pleiades. You guys have probably recognized this in, in your Elite Dangerous Game Sky uh, quite frequently. But um, the Pleiades is sort of pretty close to a rather large constellation of Taurus the Bull, um, which we can sort of see this this V star combination sort of makes up the center of, or at least the, you know, that's the that's the the body of the bull, and then the horns extend off to the left of the screen, and everything like that. So. Um, this is a destination you can go to in Elite Dangerous. You can go and explore every single one of those stars, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're going to start heading towards some of the winter constellations. In fact, I think I can see it down here. Oh, yep, right, there it is. This is a constellation that's only vi uh, visible uh, to the Northern Hemisphere people during the winter, or um, to the Southern Hemisphere people in the summer. So, hi Australia, you guys are seeing... Uh, are seeing this, um, are not able to see this constellation, and uh, this huge red blob is in fact the Orion Nebula. <clears throat> uh, we can't see it in visible light. This is Elite Dangerous enhancing it for us. So, um, but one of the the shoulder of Orion is actually Betelgeuse, and that's another place we can go to. Betelgeuse. So here I have Betelgeuse some 498 light years away, once again making up that uh, <clears throat> that uh, right shoulder, I guess, if Hercules is facing us, it'd be his right shoulder. And then to the right, you can see all the, the line of stars that make up his bow and everything. Um, <clears throat> and the center of his belt is, par is part of the Orion Nebula. So that is Betelgeuse in Orion. We'll take a look at the brightest star in the night sky in Elite Dangerous is represented by Sirius and you have to have a, um, a permit to go there actually. So here's Sirius. Sirius makes up the uh, Canis, Canis Major constellation and this constellation, the Sirius star, is actually only visible to people in the Southern Hemisphere. I don't think people in the Northern Hemisphere can see Sirius at all. Uh, people near the equator can, uh, at least during winter time I think, but that's about it. Now we start getting to some of our more, our even closer neighbors here. Um, the second closest neighbor we have is Bernard's star. And this one we're going to have to turn around and then flip over because we'll be upside down and backwards. There's Bernard's star. I'm going to turn myself around to orient myself correctly here. So Bernard's star is, uh, once again, it's part of the um, Ophiuchus constellation, and uh, people who are fans of Mech Warrior would would recognize Russellhog, which is uh, I'm going to point right at it. That's this star right here, and that, once again, that's a place you can go to. But um, 
you know, the Russell Hog Free is uh, is one of the factions in a uh, game, uh, in basically the Battletech universe, <coughs> of which Mech Warrior was a part. Um, so, you know, if we cross over the uh, Bernard Star into, or uh, over the Milky Way galaxy and see this, this formation down here, this is uh, Sagittarius. The constellation Sagittarius. And our nearest neighbor we will take a look at is Alpha Centauri. So we're going to yaw and pitch over to where Alpha Centauri is right on the galactic plane. And to the right of Alpha Centauri, you can see Crux. But Alpha Centauri is actually part of the Centaurus um, constellation. In fact, it's the brightest star of the Centaurus constellation. And Centaurus is actually a fairly large constellation. We'll get it set up on the screen here so you can see it pretty well. Um, yeah, this makes up the Centaurus constellation. And Alpha Centaurus is also one of the brighter stars in our night sky <clears throat> uh, and it is in fact our closest neighbor at three four point three eight light years away so this kind of gives you an idea of how accurately represented everything is in elite dangerous uh, we have traveled quite away from anything interesting so um, i'm going to go ahead and turn myself around and see if i can't find earth Set our destination for Earth. I'm going to go ahead and super cruise back there, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the other side. So until then, hang tight. And we're back. I noticed when I was flying around, uh, getting my materials and stuff prepared for this, that there was a capital ship uh, orbiting Earth somewhere, and I figured we could go take a look at it uh, and see what it has to say. So uh, one thing I'll say about the, the astronomy and stuff that's really cool is that Elite Dangerous, although it's a fictional future universe and we're doing fantastical things like flying at super uh, faster than the speed of light and stuff like that, um, it is based on uh, our real Milky Way galaxy. And as we saw uh, with some of those other, I'm going to slow way down, with some of those other destinations, uh, you know, the night sky that you see, especially the Milky Way galaxy, is kind of flat compared to what's in reality. Uh, which is everything in 3D. So I can actually slow way down here and give you a quick galactic map look at that. So here we are at Sol, our home sun. And if I just run around a little bit, <clears throat> uh, on these. So there, here's the uh, the star Ursa Major. Um, and in 3D space, here's the position of the Pleiades cluster that uh, lights up the night sky much of the year. And Beetlejuice is over here. So. Um, you know, you can see that we have all these all these things in 3D positional space. You can zoom out here and see what's actually going on. Um, and we have all these stars in, in our local proximity, Alpha Centauri and Wise, Bernard Star, which we talked about, uh, and stuff like that. Wolf 359 is, is up that away. So that gives you a really cool indication as far as how um, space is actually represented, uh, like, in three dimensions here. So we're going to fly in. And, and close out by taking a peek at this capital ship. This will be a Federation capital ship, by the way. Uh, and you can't, can't get into this system even, unless you have earned your way to a Sol uh, permit as a, uh, as a premium beta tester and beyond. I have a Sol permit. So that's why it's kind of cool for me to fly in here and show you. Boom, there it is. This is the um, this is the FNS Farragut, a Farragut class battlecruiser. How about that? Let's take a really nice close look. Got a hangar bay right there. internal connections looks like they have fighter bays and stuff inside if I had a sidewinder I'd actually go inside but I'm not gonna do that right now there's another 
I'm <laughs> being. This is pretty awesome. I'm gonna put all my thing and shields just in case I accidentally smash into this thing. We're we'll flying nice and close though. We can actually sort of fly at a bit of an angle just to give this thing a nice look over. So there you have it, my shadow against the Farragut capital ship of the capital ship of the Federation. Uh, I think I'm on the bottom side actually. FDN RD5, the Farragut. Let's go to the top. Ah, oh, here we go. Yep, <clears throat> capital ship of the Federation. Look at that sticker. And we can take a look at the radio and and guidance clusters here. Communications array, all that good stuff. Uh, and that is going to be it. Here we have a marvelous view of Earth. So, looking at the Earth, I'm actually going to wrap it up here and call this bonus episode good enough. I hope you kind of enjoyed the stuff, taking a look at that astronomical stuff, taking a look at the capital ship, taking a look at Earth. And I'll be getting back to my regular stuff, which is trying to figure out how to make money. So, until next time, keep flying and stay shiny. Goodbye!